The concept of community succession occurs in both aquatic and terrestrial habitats, uh, but we're going to concentrate today on ecological succession or an orderly change in communities associated with terrestrial habitats. Now, basically what ecological succession involves is a change, both physical, chemical, and biological, in communities through time. The stages involved are classic. The pioneer stage, the moss stage, the grasses, shrubs, eventually trees, young trees, mature trees, and ultimately the climax vegetation. Later on, we'll talk about each of these stages of succession individually. Each of the stages is called a sear or a seral stage. In other words, the moss seral stage or the shrub seral stage. These stages and the changes that occur associated with succession are not caused by climate, but they're directed by climate. In other words, succession occurs regardless of the climate. But it is affected by the climate in this regard. One of the two, uh, two of the most major effects, or the greatest effects on ecological succession, are temperature and moisture. And of course, both of those are climatic types of events. Succession is also affected by differences in soil so that regardless of where you are in any particular locale, from one area to another, the speed of succession and the individual organisms within each of the stages of succession, of course, will vary. Ultimately, what develops is a climax stage that is, as we'll talk about later on, self-perpetuating. In other words, if it's left undisturbed, it will maintain itself through time. As succession proceeds, remember that not only the vegetation is changing, but the animal population is undergoing succession as well. With the animal population, with each successive stage, there's an increase in not only abundance, but in diversity as well. In other words, as we go further along in succession, not only are there more uh, plants, and animals, but there is also a greater diversity or a greater number of species of plants and animals in each of the stages of succession. These stages in succession, each of them set the stage for the next stage. In other words, if we take briefly for an example, lichens growing on a rock surface. These lichens change rock very, very slowly into soil. Now, at first, it's just preparing uh, a flat rock surface, uh, preparing it in terms of creating a few crevices, uh, a little breakdown of that. But this change allows the next stage, the moss stage, to take hold. And that's true of all the stages. They change the soil. They change other characteristics associated with the habitat so that the next stage in succession can then take hold. In subsequent segments, We'll talk about each of the individual stages in succession, the types of organisms associated with them, and how each of those stages sets the stage for the succeeding stage.